Okey, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon. So I have just uh, come back from the uh, our SKE office and I have uh, and then the office have already uh, said that our original class BT6 is is uh, has been repaired. Okay, so meaning that our next class, which is uh, next week, uh, will be reverted back to physical, okay? So our next class will be physical. Okay. Um, just maybe that I should here. Okay, because our original uh, BT6 has been restored. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, um, I hope you can hear me. Okay. Um, okay, uh, just to uh, share with you the second test. Okay, our second test will be physical on 18th of June 2020, which is on Saturday, uh, 9 p.m. till 10.15 p.m. Okay, at uh, Bilik Peperiksaan uh, Examination Room, Block P16. Okay, so why we uh, do it in Saturday? because we need to synchronize with the part-time student the utm space student which is in kl so uh that's uh, so since uh because they are working so uh that's why we are we need to conduct it on weekend days okay and uh why uh, it is held in uh, 9 pm because uh, actually that student the our utm space they got a class Okay, at the evening session, so that's why we need to, uh, to help it on, uh, night session. Okay, so nine p.m. till ten fifteen p.m. So this is a physical. Okay. Okay, and what is the topic? What is the topic for test two? So question number one is on bug converter. Okay, for this bug converter question, it's actually a straightforward, straightforward question. And I think if you have uh, uh done the exercise and examples that i have already shared with you for the bug converters and boost converters you can actually no problem on um 
answering that question. Okay, because uh, the type of question is quite similar to the examples and the exercise that I have already give to you. Okay, and there is no equations. Okay, there is no equation will be given. So meaning that uh, if you want to memorize, then you need to memorize the equations. But I think for this uh, question, but converters, I think uh, no need to memorize that. Okay, no need to memorize the equation because uh, if you memorize it and then you do the calculation based on the equation, so it will be more complicated. Okay. Because all the information is given in waveform. Okay. So in this question, it will give you a waveform. From that waveform, you extract information. Then you can answer that. Question number two is DC motor drive. Using permanent uh, permanent magnet, okay. Permanent magnet DC motor. So permanent magnet DC motor is actually uh, the field circuit is uh, negligible. Okay, you can ignore the field circuit because the stator is already permanent magnet, so no need to have field circuit. Okay, so for DC motor drive, this one. Uh, is actually uh, two quadrant okay two quadrant dc motor drive and i have already uh if you look at the our previous examples okay on the dc motor drive uh the last example which is example three we haven't dis discussed yet, but I have already uh, uh, made the, the the video on the solution. Actually, the solution is already there in the slide, but maybe there is need some uh, explanation and so on. So I have um, already uh, made the video on the explanation on why uh, why the step and so on. So I think you can uh, refer to that. I have already uploaded in the, my YouTube channel. Okay, so you can refer to that. Okay, uh, I think uh, for the DC motor drive, the question is also straightforward. And if you are able to answer the question, which is from the examples, then I think there is no problem on answering uh, this. Okay, actually both questions, most are straightforward. Okay, straightforward. Okay, so that is uh, all for the second test, which is on 18th of June, okay? So this one will be in physical, okay? So I hope you, uh, for those who are still not uh, still not inside UTM, so please make sure that you are inside UTM by this uh, date, because uh, for your information, our final exam is will be face-to-face, -face, okay? So if you cannot attend the final exam, then automatically you will fail this course. Okay, that one has been highlighted during our first meeting and also have been highlighted by our uh, associate chair, Dr. Fendi, that um, final exam will be physical, okay? So if the student not able to come, so the student will be automatically fail. Okay, that is not my order. That is actually our school uh, uh, statement, okay? Okay, so so this is actually the full bridge inverter, single phase full bridge inverter, where we have four switches: S one, S two, S three, and also oh, this one. Don't refer to this lah. Okay, the 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 the, the name is actually uh, quite confusing. We use S one. S2, S3, and S4. Okay, please follow this one. The order S1 here, S2 is here, S3 and S4. And it is connected to a any voltage source. 
okay any dc voltage source it can be the output from the rectifiers for example this one okay it can be from rectifiers where this one is dc and then convert back to back okay so so as you can see here we have already ac source why we need why we need to do a conversion so this one is ac to dc and then after that we convert back dc into ac why don't we directly connect our load to the original source okay so why we need to do this conversion we need to do this conversion as mentioned before in our first chapter to suit the requirement of the load maybe the, the load requires certain voltage current and also frequency okay so maybe this our tnb is 240 volt okay and then the frequency is 50 hertz right so if the load requires maybe 100 volts and the frequency is 100 volt right so how so actually you can um use inverters uh sorry transformers right transformers uh step uh down transformer 240 to 100 volt right you can use transformer right is it correct because ac to ac so no problem if you want to convert or you if you want to step down or step up an ac voltage and ac current so no need this conversion actually you can use transformer okay so step down transformer 240 to 100 volt is very easy by using transformer but what if we want the frequency load for example the load requires 100 hertz 100 hertz how can we convert the frequency of 50 hertz into a 100 hertz which is by using transformer it is not possible okay it is not possible from 50 to 100 it's not possible because the transformer is only used to step up or step down the voltage and the current not the frequency this is where the power electronics come okay so before that what we need to do is to convert it into a dc okay we are using rectifier here okay and then after that we are using dc to ac where this one we uh, control the switching so that the frequency can the voltage can be uh, adjustable maybe 100 hertz 100 volt and the frequency also can be adjustable into the frequency that the load required okay so this is why we need this inverters okay so uh, there are a lot of circuits of inverters the most popular one is the full bridge inverter which consisted of four switches s1 like this s1 s2 s3 and s4 okay and as you can see each transistor they have this one the diode d1 d2 and so on so what is this diode this diode is what called anti parallel diode okay uh, this diode is actually uh, the operation the function of this diode is just for a safety reason okay so the diode here is actually do not uh, affect the operation of the circuit okay this is just for protection from the uh, short circuit and so on okay so the input is a dc and the output is an ac okay so this is a full bridge and as we already know that for this inverter we will discuss about square wave inverter and then we have a quasi square wave inverter and then we have pwm okay all these inverters actually use the same circuit we are using the full bridge circuit the difference is actually 
this um, name is actually uh, depends on the switching technique that we use. Whether, uh, whether using a square wave technique, quasi square wave technique, or pulse wave modulation technique. Okay, so actually the circuit is the same. Only the, the difference is actually on how we control the switching of the transistors by using square wave technique, quasi square wave, or PWM. Okay, I hope that one is clear. Okay, this one because square wave, quasi. This one. This one is what we call a switching scheme of the inverters. Okay, so we go for the first one, which is the simplest one, the square wave inverters. Okay, so as you can see here, to obtain the positive VDC output here, the total output is like this. VDC and negative VDC. Okay, so to obtain positive VDC, S1 and S2 must turn on. And to obtain negative VDC, S3 and S4 must turn on. Okay. Okay. So S1 and S3, S1 dan juga S4. Okay. S1 is equals to S4 bar. Okay. While S3 is equals to S. Sorry, S2 bar. S2 is equal to S. S2 is equal to S3 bar. Meaning that this one is S4. This one is your S3, right? So S1 and S4 cannot be turned on at the same time. Similar with S2 and S3. It cannot be turned on at the same time. Because if you turn on S1 and S4, so your circuit will be become short-circuited. Okay? So if S1 is on, S4 must be turned off. Okay? So the output will be a square wave output. So this is we have we this one is actually we have we can consider this one a successful conversion of DC to AC. So this is the simplest inverters, which is we call square wave inverters. But this kind of output voltage which is VDC and negative VDC, is only suitable for a very um, simple load. For example, for the lighting, okay, the electricity bulb, okay, lampu, uh, the fan. Okay, This one is acceptable. They can uh, fit with this kind of voltage. But if you are using this voltage supply, to supply your computers, your televisions, which is uh, requires a very good quality of AC voltage, uh, so they will burn out. Okay, they cannot operate. They cannot turn on. You cannot turn on your computers or your television. Or it might be broken. Okay, because that because in their system they requires a very clean sinusoidal voltage. Okay, so if you fit your television or your computer desktop with this one, so your computer will be malfunction. Okay. But actually, for your information, we will study on the FFT or Fourier series. Okay. This Fourier series is very good because they show us that from this waveform, we can extract. We can extract from this waveform, we can extract to get a pure sinusoidal. Okay. From this, from this waveform, we can, uh, by analyzing the Fourier series, we can actually extract voltage output as a sinusoidal. So how to do that? Okay, so this is actually the output voltage. So, to actually to know how we can extract sinusoidal from the square wave, so we need to study uh, what is the components, okay, inside the waveform. So this Fourier uh, is actually they uh, he study the waveform 
based on the frequency domain. Okay, based on the frequency domain. So he said that this kind of waveform, for example, the square wave waveform. Okay, this is time. This is your, uh, for example, function t. Okay, function t, which is a square wave. Uh, Fourier said that this function can be in terms of equation can be written like this. Okay, in mathematical equation, it can be written like this. It has AO component. What is AO? Which is this one. We have AN, which is you can compute by using this equation. And we have BN. Okay, bukan barisan nasional eh. Okay, so Fourier said that this waveform contains these three elements. A, O, A, N, and also B, N. Okay. And further study, okay, uh, by using this square wave, okay, it stated that after uh, we compute this, okay, it stated that A, O for this square wave is zero. Okay. The first element. AO is zero. So actually AO here is actually referring to what we call average component. Whether it is has a DC. Okay, for example, this actually actually the we call DC component. For an AC waveform, which is symmetrical, which is the area for the positive cycle and the negative cycle is similar. So the DC component is zero, right? Because average component, average. So if you average this one, you integral positive to negative area, your average value will be zero, okay? Right? If this waveform is symmetrical, positive has the same area, negative also has the same area, then the, your DC component should be zero, okay? This one has been proved by using a Fourier equation here for AO. And then, is also stated that if this um, waveform is symmetrical and actually it can is actually uh, just a reflection of the positive cycle here, so we have a n this component a n is zero. Okay, so from the Fourier we uh, we conclude that a o is zero and then a n is also zero has been proved by using this equation. What about BN, the third, the third component here? Okay. For the third component, okay, there, there is some value for the third component, which is this value. From the equation, from the waveform, uh, it has uh, simplified. And then the BN has this equation, which is 2VDC over N pi multiplied with 1 minus cos N pi. Okay. And n is actually a number from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, until infinity. And then if the n is even, which is uh, 0, sorry. <clears throat> n is actually starting from 1, okay? So for example, n is 2, 4, 6, and so on. It's stated that if this n is even, the cos n phi will become 1. Okay, this term will become 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So when n is even number, so your BN component, which is consisted of MCA, MIC, and so on, is 0. Only when n is odd, which is 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on, it will give the term of negative 1 here. So 1 minus minus 1, so it becomes 2. So that's why we have for even, so for odd numbers, we have the BN values equals to 4 VDC over N pi. So final equation, which is for the square wave like this, the final equation, which is your V out, this one is your V out T. 
is equals to the summation which is a o and a n is zero right so we have only b n so for v d c over n pi sine n omega not t so what is mean meaning that if you v o t here okay v o t here so it equal to four v d c and this n is actually odd numbers okay n is equal to one three five and so on okay so pi sine omega not t plus 4 vdc over 3 pi right so right now n is replaced with 3 sine 3 omega not t and then plus the second the next component is 5 so 4 vdc over 5 pi sine 5 omega not t plus the next is 7, 4 VDC over 7 pi sine 7 omega naught t. So plus, and then the next is n is equal to 1, 3, 5 until infinity. So this is actually the mathematical equation for a square wave. So from this equation, what can you conclude from this equation? Can someone? VOT is the summation of this one, which is 4 VDC over pi, n is equal to 1, right? So 4 VDC over pi sine omega naught t plus 4 VDC over 3 pi sine omega naught t plus 4 VDC, the, the third elements, and so on. So it is actually the summation of, summation of sinusoidal waveform. Is it correct? This square wave is actually a summation of different sinusoidal waveform. Is it correct? Can you agree with me? Boleh tak? Setuju semua? Okay, setuju eh? You agree eh? But different amplitude, right? Different amplitude. You can see. This one 4 VDC over pi, this one also 4 VDC over 3 pi, this one 4 VDC over 5 pi. So different amplitude and also different frequency. This one is omega naught, this one is 3 times omega naught, this one is 5 times omega naught, and so on. Okay, so now. Thank you for the Fourier series. We know that actually this square wave consisted of sinusoidal waveform that we want. Okay. So this is actually the waveform, the extraction from this inverter output square wave. It actually consisted of this one. This waveform is actually for VDC over pi sine omega not t right this waveform is for vdc over 3 pi sine 3 omega not 3 and this waveform is for vdc over 5 pi sine 5 omega not t right so this one you sum up all these three components maybe uh, 7 uh, and equal to 7 and so on is actually we represent this one. Right? Correct? Meaning that if you sum up all the sinusoidal, we will become a square wave. If you don't agree with me, you can do a simulation. Okay? In a MATLAB, so you put a sinusoidal waveform with this magnitude for VDC over pi. And then the second uh, magnitude with the 4 VDC over 3 pi and so on, then you sum up, you will see that your waveform will become a square wave. Okay, 
So as you can see here, the magnitude here is the peak peak value. Okay, this one is actually peak values. Four VDC over pi. This one is four VDC over three pi, and this one is four VDC over five pi. Which is this one is four VDC over pi. We consider as a V one, right? V one. The voltage for the first component, which is n, is equal to one, and this is the voltage for n is equals to three, which is this one. As you can see, this one four VDC over pi is V one, right? So that's why we can state it like this: V one over Three, this one also. Okay, this one is your V one, so that's why we can state it like this: V one over one. Okay, and the frequency. So this one is your omega naught. This one, n is equal to three. So your frequency is three times omega naught. So as you can see, it's faster, right? The frequency is fast. Uh, the 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 waveform is uh, actually faster, has a more cycle, and then this n is equal to five. We have the frequency of the sinusoidal is five times of the original omega naught. Okay, so this is actually uh, in time domain. So Fourier has um, simplified, and then it actually um, display into a voltage versus um, frequency okay voltage versus frequency so if your frequency number one the fundamental is 50 hertz okay when n is equal to 1 so this one is n is equal to 3 so this one is your f3 which is 3 times f1 which is 150 hertz this one n is equal to 5 so you sorry n is equal to 5 meaning that this one your frequency okay is equal to 5 times of your f1 which is 250 hertz and is equal to 7 so your frequency is 7 time of f1 which is berapa eh 7 kali 50 350 hertz so this one is frequency which is 50 hertz this one is 200 and sorry this one is 150 hertz so this one is 250 hertz this one is 350 hertz this one is 9 times by 50 okay so actually this one v1 the magnitude is v1 this one magnitude is v1 over 3 this magnitude is v1 over 5 this magnitude oh sorry one five, this magnitude which is v1 over 7 this magnitude is V1 over 9 and so on, V1 over 11. So, so Fourier have uh, actually summarized and then display into a time, uh, for, sorry, frequency domain. Okay. So, it says that, that the square wave is actually a summation of sinusoidal waveform. But the sinusoidal waveform has different amplitude and different frequency. So, so from square wave, how can we get the sinusoidal output that we wanted? This is the sinusoidal, right? All this bar represent a sinusoidal magnitude. This is all sinusoidal waveform but different magnitude and different frequency. The sinusoidal that we want is this one. The first fundamental, the first component, which is 
we have 50 hertz right this is what we want this is our power system 50 hertz we want this but we don't want this the third the fifth seven and so on we don't want this one so how to obtain only this sinusoidal by using low pass filter okay low pass filter can low pass filter we can use low pass filter ada yang tak faham boleh tanya you can speak in Malay if you don't understand okay we want to get rid this this is actually this the third the fifth the seven nine and ten is actually this is actually harmonics eh? pengacau eh? harmonics we don't want this because when we have this your waveform is not sinusoidal your waveform is square wave okay so we want to eliminate these harmonics when you eliminate these harmonics your it, we can have this our own our desired voltage which is a sinusoidal with a frequency of 50 hertz so we are using low pass filter so meaning that we create a low pass filter so it will cut out this one what we call f o or f sometimes also fc okay which is one over two pi square lc we are using low pass filter lc filter here okay lc filter l and c filter using this formula so this fc is a frequency cut off where we uh, where is the, actually the the cut off frequency so we can eliminate the third fifth and so on okay so by using low pass filter we can extract or we can remove all the harmonics here so the only uh, appears at our output is an sinusoidal which is if i draw so this is your dc this is your ac okay before we connect the load so we need to put low pass filter okay l and c so this one we call filter this one is also a filter the function of this lc is actually to filter out the harmonics meaning that the output should be like this after the filter the output will be a sinusoidal okay so this one is still is actually 50 hertz so but this one is also 50 hertz but sinusoidal okay any question okay so we call this harmonics okay harmonics number three harmonics number five seven nine and eleven and so on okay so we only sometimes we consider only uh three to four harmonics only because as you can see the harmonic number fifth number eleven and then maybe number thirteen and so on the magnitude is almost um very very small okay we can actually ignore their 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 effect on the quality of the output so usually as you can see the third and fifth usually the, the biggest one so that's why sometimes we only consider calculation okay in, on the quality based on the the first third harmonics okay and as you can see here uh, harm, uh, harmonics number the even number which is n is equal to two four six are absent okay are absent because uh from Fourier that we have learned for this ac which is positive and negative we have a cyclic so all even harmonics are cancelled okay only odd harmonics are available okay 
So the nearest harmonics is the third harmonics. So if the fundamental frequency F1 is 50 hertz, so meaning that your frequency for the third harmonic is 150 hertz. Okay. So as you can see, the separation between the fundamental and the third harmonics eh, uh, is very, very near, 50 and 150. The separation is very, very small. So sometimes to design the frequency cutoff, okay, FC here, for example, FC is actually equals to maybe 100 hertz. Okay, 100 hertz, you potong kat sini. So actually, the this value L and C is very big. The value of the inductor and capacitor to obtain the FC equal to 100 hertz, usually the size is very, very big. So sometimes that's why uh, the design of the filter is quite difficult. Okay. Okay. So the application of the inverter usually can be found in uh, renewable energy. For example, if you have a solar, okay, because solar uh, the output is DC, so usually we need a DC to DC boost converters, and then after you have boost up the voltage, then we uh, do an AC conversion, so DC to AC. And then usually we use a transformer, okay, before connected to the grid, right? So this transformer is just for isolation, electrical isolation for safety purpose, okay? So the TNV grid, our utilities, okay? they are already sinusoidal okay but and then so we are for example we are a, what we call uh, the what we call a generator okay from our home we generate an ac power and then we want to sell our surplus energy that we have generated from our solar panel into a tnb grid okay but in order for our energy that have been produced by us to the TNB grid. So the, T, the TNB grid give us some requirement. You cannot directly connect your system to the grid. The TNB has a several requirement, which is because it need to maintain their power quality. Okay, if your output of the inverter is a square wave inverter, so the TNB totally will reject your application. Okay, the TNB will reject your application. They don't want your inverter's output like this square wave to be connected to the grid because it will uh, reduce the power quality of the TNB because the TNB voltage is sinusoidal. And then suddenly you want to connect your system which is square wave into a grid. So the TNB will not allow that. Okay, so you need to make sure that your output voltage meet their minimum requirement. You, your waveform must be at least a sinusoidal with what you call the total harmonics distortion factors, which is THD is less than 5%. Okay, so this is actually the re standard requirement, international requirement. If you want to connect your system and then to sell your extra energy that you have generated from solar panel and so on to the grid, this is the requirement your output voltage must contain the total harmonics distortion less than 5%. Okay? If your output voltage cannot meet this requirement, 
So the TNB or your utilities will reject your application. You cannot connect your system into the grid. Okay, because it will affect the other users. So, how can we measure this one? How can we calculate? What is the equation? So, we go for the next slide. So, this is actually the equation that we use to calculate the THD. And this THD is depends. You have the THD for the voltage and you have also a THD for the current. So, THDV and THD. I. Okay. So as you can see at this part, the upper part here is actually all harmonics. Okay, harmonic voltage. Okay, RMS. So harmonic voltage meaning that starting from n is equal to two. Tapi n equal to two is uh, so meaning that is starting from three, five, seven. 9 and so on okay this is actually the summation of all rms harmonic voltage square and then square root you sum up all and then square root then over the fundamental so this one we call fundamental fundamental component okay Or, in other words, you can use, if you already know, this one is your V out, right? If you already know V out RMS for your voltage, what you need to do is just uh, minus the fundamental voltage. So, because V out is actually contain all the information, okay? You minus the V1, so meaning that when you minus this V1, so actually all the upper part here is actually harmonic component only. Okay. Over the V1 RMS, then you can get your THD for the voltage waveform. The same case also goes for the current, which is uh, this one. The upper side here is the summation of all your harmonic current. Okay, RMS. But it is very tedious compared to the voltage because uh, for the current, you need to use VN over ZN. So, meaning that. For every harmonic current, which is I3, so you need to calculate your V3 and also your Z3. I5 also V5 over Z5. So what is your V3? For the square wave, is for VDC over 3 pi. For V5, is for VDC over 5 Okay, and what is your Z3? So if for example, this is your load. Okay, this is your R. Okay, R load. Okay, for example, uh, this is your inverters, this uh, DC to AC without filter. So this one 10 ohm and then maybe your L here, maybe 10 milli Henry. Okay, so your Z3 is R plus J, eh, sorry, three, um, And for Z5 is R square plus 5 omega L square. Okay, so actually uh, the general generic equation for impedance is this one. R plus N omega L square. Okay. So it's quite tedious work because you need to calculate 
uh, V3 first and then the impedance because the impedance and the voltage are not same. The value are not same for each harmonics. Okay, so this one um, is actually the slide that uh, how the calculation of the for, for the harmonics, okay, V harmonics, current harmonics, impedance harmonics, and so on. Okay, and then this one is actually example one. I think we we proceed this on our next class. Okay, so our next class after this will be physical. Okay, because uh, I have already received uh, information that uh, our original class BT6 uh, have been restored and then uh, it's good to go. So we will revert back to the physical. Okay. So I think that's all from me. Any question before we dismiss this class? Okay, thank you, Ahmad Iqbal. So, uh, so we have a long weekend here. Okay, because uh, Sunday and then Monday is our Agung birthday. So we have berapa hari cuti? Jumaat, Sabtu, Ahad, Isnin. Four days. So I think most of you have plan your holiday maybe for with your friends and so on but please be careful if you want to go for desaru desaru beach so please uh, for example tanjung balau and so on please be careful there because uh, we have experience where uh, we have cases uh, dead cases by uh, from our own students okay um, drown during their holidays with friends at tanjung balau Okay, because the, the 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 beach there, the is not kalandai lah. They the time they are doing the thing to is very deep. Okay, so please be careful on that. So we don't want to have to hurt uh, any bad news. Okay, so I think uh, that's all from me. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Salam.